As I've stated before, Wheeljack wasn't originally intended to be a release in the Earthrise toy line. Technically, he was planned as far back as the early days of Siege, where he was involved in that two-pack fan vote that resulted in Mirage and Impactor getting their toys first, with a surprise late-wave appearance from Spinister. Naturally, Spinister's entry on the attendance sheet caused many to wonder if Wheeljack would get made as well. And he was! And with the confirmation of an Autobot Trax in Kingdom's lineup, I can only hope Needlenose gets his due as well. Welcome to Kit Catastrophe. My name is Kit, and today we'll be taking a look at Transformers Earthrise Deluxe Class Wheeljack. This figure was released in 2020 as part of Wave 1 of the Deluxe Assortment. As we've seen with the previous entries in this toy line, Earthrise eschews the Cybertronian aesthetic that Siege was hesitant at best to follow through with, and instead goes back to the good old tried and true Halcyon days of the Reagan administration and just doing Earth modes again. As such, Earthrise Wheeljack transforms into a legally distinct estimation of a Lancia rally car, similar to the one Wheeljack sported in Generation 1. While normally I'd roll my eyes at Hasbro returning to G1 yet again for yet another one of its characters, the only other figure of Wheeljack that turns into his rally car form is the Masterpiece version. Yeah, Generations decided to make him street legal and turn him into a flashy but still mundane sports car, so I'm actually welcome to this return to roots. And with that, I can safely say that I am in love with this alternate mode. The proportions are to die for, as it's sleek and sharp and low to the ground. This is a pure speed machine. I think my favorite feature would be the massive wraparound windshield. I love shit like that. From most angles, the sharp lines and angles look fierce and striking. There's also a bunch of sculpted detailing as well, such as the various vents and panel lines on the hood. While we're here, I know some people have been complaining about the red and green and how they're too dull, but I disagree. The color I have the most problem with is the white base plastic used for most of this figure. It's kind of a sad meme at this point that Hasbro can't get white plastic right, and Wheeljack's no exception to this as he's cast in this sickly off-white that may look good under my lights from time to time, but in normal viewing conditions, just looks kinda gross. It's a good thing that a good portion of it is covered up by paint and tampographs. The stripes running down the rear stair-step section looks great from every angle, and don't even get me started on the decals. I'm an absolute sucker for these when they appear on a vehicle mode, and Wheeljack has quite a few. Pretty much every single one of these decals is some kind of fanwank reference or another. My personal favorite logo is Wheeljack Invenzione. For all you weebs out there, the word Cybertron is spelled out in katakana on the right hand side and on the rear wing. Another thing people tend to take issue with is the orange wheels. I also disagree on this one as they provide a nice pop of color and are in the realm of plausibility on a race car. When I take a look at Exhaust, I'll be sure to swap around the parts for comparison, as he comes with silver rims. Spoiler alert, they look great. Compared to that of Cliff Jumper or Hoist, Wheeljack's transformation is pretty basic. That's not a bad thing by any means, but it is also really fun to perform and a breeze to get through. I feel the mass of the arms was integrated really smartly into the vehicle form, and I think that forming Wheeljack's iconic wings from the spoiler was a stroke of genius. However, once you rotate the front half of the car around and plug the chest plate in, the, I feel the transformation takes something of a downturn. I'm not fond of the errant chunks of windshield you have to fold away, though I recognize that it's a necessary thing to put elsewhere so as to provide a cleaner chest and free up the waist swivel in robot mode. Sadly, the windshield chunks can be prone to popping off their mushroom peg, which can be a bit annoying at times. The legs themselves seem flimsy in comparison to the rest of this figure, as there aren't so many locking points for the shins as there are resting and wedging points. The feet are understandably free to move where they like, but I feel they have a bit too much give to them. But that's a story more fit for the articulation segment. When I first got this figure, I thought that his proportions looked a bit... off. His arms seemed a bit too long and wide, his legs a bit too short, and his body a bit too small. However, I no longer feel this is the case, mostly due to a very important comparison. Yeah, things could be a whole lot worse, couldn't they? I think one of the major factors contributing to the weird look of his arms is the leftover vehicle mode panels stuck onto the backs of his hands, as they stick out pretty far and don't give a proper tapered curve running from the forearm to the wrist. Ignoring that, Wheeljack looks pretty okay. 
Of course, he's a little on the smaller side, as many modern Transformers tend to be, but I dig his proportions. The colors are also pretty good, outside of that slightly expired milk white, as there is a lot more black exposed via his forearms and legs, with the windshield unifying it all with a nice dark smoky gray. Like I mentioned during the transformation, I feel forming the wings out of Wheeljack's spoiler was really clever, though I understand many feel that those wings end up a bit too small. Personally, I don't mind so much, and I'm sure there will be some kind of upgrade kit out sooner or later if there already isn't one. Bringing our attention from the shoulders to the head is the... uh... head sculpt. <clears throat> I suspect I'm beginning to sound like a broken record at this point, but whoever's been designing all the head sculpts has done a really bang up job lately. Wheeljack's head design is one of the few I dare describe as iconic without sounding like too much of a pretentious bastard, since compared to pretty much the rest of the Transformers multiverse, it's so unique with the triple-pronged mohawk and those strange protuberances jutting out his ears. We're spoiled as it is with these head sculpts, but in a perfect world, those would be made of some vibrant blue light piping. Wheeljack only comes with one accessory, a chunk of weaponry painted entirely in a gleaming gunmetal gray. You can place it in Wheeljack's hand, but I don't know why you'd want to when it's clearly meant to be his shoulder-mounted rocket launcher. It tabs into either of the slots beside his head and looks like a happy little bird perched up there. Now, some take issue with the fact that Wheeljack doesn't come with a handheld weapon, but I don't feel he needs to come with one when he's got his trusty launcher. He's got plenty of 5mm ports to utilize any of the weaponizers from Siege or commandeer someone else's gun. The spoiler wings are actually removable, revealing even more ports with which to go wild arming this crazed inventor. Now, I'm gonna tell you right here, Jack. Wheeljack is a bona fide, certified inventor. He ain't no poser. Posing? Starting at the head, he has a ball joint, which actually has a lot of range. It can rotate all the way around, even with the shoulder uh, missile launcher in place. And it can look up a little bit, and it can look down a little bit, so he can do a nice nod. He can even tilt a bit, because, you know, in uh, inquisitors, inventors, have to be inquisitive. The little back wings can twiddle back and forth however you like. You can get them out of the way if you don't want to give him wings and just give him a little plank behind his shoulder, but I like things at an angle. His shoulders move forward on a swivel joint and they move backwards a little bit, but they do crash into this back plate pretty hard, but you can bring the arms outwards and maneuver them around. There's also another pin joint in the middle of the shoulder mask that allows him to shrug a little bit, so you can have him be like... I don't fucking know what to do. I don't, I don't know. As you can see in that exhibition of pure comedic genius, his biceps swivel, though they do... As you could see in that exhibition of comedic genius, his biceps... Motherfuck! His biceps swivel, though they don't go all the way around because some molding detail gets bunched up against some more molded detail and it just clashes. It can go this way too. There's only a 180 degree arc of rotation, so you can't get him to do unnatural things. His elbow also only bends 90 degrees, which is a shame, but, you know, it's the bare minimum of what I deem acceptable. His wrists also swivel, but they are free because of the way the car panel is cut. It allows a free swivel. Speaking of a free swivel, his waist swivels all the way around on a very nice joint. His legs can kick forward and they can kick backward. They can do the splits. The thighs can rotate 360 degrees, and the knees can bend just about 90 degrees, which is okay. Out of the box, you'll find that the feet probably won't tilt, but that's because there is a tab somewhere in here that you need to unlock, and it gives you a an extremely deep ankle pivot. There's also like a bajillion more fucking joints in the toe here that allows it to just go all over the fucking place. And my problem with this is that there's really no detent to like let it rest somewhere and let it hold. You just kind of mush it down. Sometimes, sometimes you'll end up with the foot where the car bits go under the sole of his foot. 
though if you mush it down against the floor, uh, you'll be fine. I don't really like the feet. They're... They, they, they work fine. It's just that they feel a little flimsy is all. And I'm not all about that. But, yeah. Wheeljack yeah, poses pretty well, I'd say. His, uh, his articulation's nominal and standard for his size class, so there's really nothing missing from him. It's just that I just wish maybe his elbows and knees were double-jointed is all. Wheeljack was the figure from Wave 1 of Earthrise I had the most trouble finding, as distributing in my area hasn't always been the best, and he was the only member of his wave not to be in stock on Amazon at the time. Eventually, of course, I got him, but I'm not sure he was worth the wait, as some would say. While not as absolutely microscopic as Cliffjumper, I feel Wheeljack is a little too small for the price point, and his transformation not quite as solid as I'd like. The lack of any handheld weaponry isn't a big issue for me, but the engineering feels a little lackluster, mostly due to those shins and feet. As far as the Wave 1 Deluxes go, I'd put Wheeljack between Hoist and Cliffjumper in terms of overall quality. But Kit, what about Ironworks? What about him, Kit? Yeah, I'm not getting any of those. Like I was saying, I think Wheeljack is serviceable, though I find him lacking in a few regards, despite that amazing alternate mode. Overall, I'm comfortable giving Earthrise Wheeljack the rank of... crummy. If you liked this video or otherwise found it helpful or informative, then please subscribe for more reviews like this in the future, and feel free to suggest topics for future reviews in the comments. When we return, we'll be taking a look at a Studio Series figure I've put on the back burner for far too long. This has been Kick Catastrophe. Transform and roll out.